welcome to an exchange for media communication bridge we have the finest the tallest and the most sought after brains in the marketing advertising communication and pr domain while they are communication leaders uh, we have mr dilip cherian who is the founder of perfect relations uh, which is now a part of uh, dense wages network dilip really doesn't need an introduction to any gathering or especially to a gathering of a communication professional we have ms roma malwani who has uh, been an advisor to entrepreneurs and big businesses and brands in terms of communication she's been a head of corporate communication in many large listed indian and mnc firms currently she is a communication advisor to the chairman of uh, vedanta uh, to the vedanta group and mr agarwal we have mr ashwini singla uh, who now runs estrum but again is a Uh, you know a stalwart uh, he is part of the founding team of genesis bus and mercer teller in between he worked with reliance advising reliance industries for a couple of years uh, we have mr paresh chaudhary who is again very entrepreneurial uh, he's led pr agencies he's been head of corporate communication i first met him 15 years back when he was the head of copcom at trendbank and now he's the head of communication at uh, the adani group last but not the least we have mr rohit bansal uh, who I admire for losing so much weight in the last 3 years and being disciplined about it but he is in the strategic communication advisory team at the Reliance Industries Limited and uh, again somebody who is well known and uh, Rohit worked in the media and editorial side before he jumped on to the PR and copcom side so he understands content really well uh, the uh, contours of today's discussions are to look at how the PR industry is dealing with the new communication challenges the opportunities and last but not the least my partner and friend and my co-founder of exchange for media mr nawal ahuja is also with us and nawal uh, and me will do this together uh, so we will broadly focus on how all of us are dealing with a new normal where is the pr domain headed are there changes in the way we all are working with our clients uh, what are those changes what are the positives negatives what is the revenue impact so have the pr budgets shrunk temporarily uh, where is the money going how has the communication bridge changed and your predictions for the future so dilip i'll start with you uh, dilip what do you have to say about the current uh, situation in the new normal in communication thank you anurag and um, it's a pleasure to be here um, with roma ashwini paresh rohit and navel thank you very much um i hope that what we discuss has value for those in the communications business so i'll go straight away without any preamble um there's going to be to start with a shrinking of business what is my estimate of the shrinking of business i would be surprised if it is anywhere less than uh, 30% i would say that the business will shrink by about 30% uh right now and it really depends on everybody's skill how they are going to rebuild from there so uh if one looks at the full year uh i would be i would probably guess that there's going to be an impact of in the region of 20% uh for the whole year so 30% is what's going to happen between the last month this month and the next month and i think when it spreads out it will probably even out to about 20% if you're smart what's going to change in the communications business i think lots has changed and lots more will change you will find uh, and i'm i'm going to be slightly uh, counter intuitive here i think that this long lockdown has shown a lot of people uh, a lot of consumers viewers readers etc that a lot of what happens in the digital space is no longer credible so you will find that contrary to current opinion and current thinking that the big brand traditional brands in media are likely to take time but they will recover because uh, i think consumers have had the luxury of being confined to seeing the kind of um, inaccurate and fake stuff 
that floods a lot of digital spaces. WhatsApp University has probably been discredited sufficiently, but I think that the final nail in the coffin happened when WhatsApp itself decided that messages which are going viral need to be controlled and you're not allowed to spread them except if you go through the painstaking process of going one by one. So I think that um, it pretty much is now obvious to discerning customers that media will change. Uh, who's going to benefit? What numbers will be? We don't know. In the meantime, they are in pain because as all of us know, uh, media houses have been much faster and more public in their cutting of salaries and their um, curtailing of numbers. I think that this is probably just an indication of what's going to happen to every single segment of our business. So I don't think that there's going to be any part which is going to be spared the pain of what's going to change. And it's not only because of the slowing of growth. I think that it's also because the business itself is changing. After opening up, I believe that uh, companies and corporations and, and uh, individuals will recognize that you need to go for branded products. Branded by that, I mean, uh, companies will have to spend a lot more time uh, communicating directly from their CEOs, from their, uh, if the handles have any respectability, but it will be necessary and it will become incumbent on leadership to be out there spreading and communicating credibly. So this is one of the changes that we have noticed um, at Perfect Relations that uh, a lot of media are looking for stories, but they're not willing unless you are, you're happy to come on record. So I think that media has recognized that there is a lot of flot Sam and get Sam about. The other thing that's changed is that communication has become, shall I say, more crisp. Uh, there is no doubt that uh, the old pedantic style of communication and content which was uh, made for one kind of medium being topoed onto another kind of medium will no longer work. So right. these are my remarks and I'll stop here unless you want me to continue for a minute more. So, so I think these are excellent opening remarks Dilip and we'll come back to you. But you said four Thank things. You. One is that in the short term and the medium term, 30% loss of business, 20% over the next 11, 12 months, uh, credible media brands will be more in demand. They may have short term pain, but in the medium long term, they'll be even more stronger and transform themselves. And, um, you know, clients and sources are being asked to be on record so that the credibility is maintained. Uh, these are my four That's takeaways. Uh, Thank you. Mr. Bansal, uh, uh, Rohit, if you're there, we'd like to work with a very India's largest business enterprise, uh, which has been in news in the last one week, to work with India's biggest media owner uh, and that ecosystem. Uh, you've been a veteran. Give us your opening comments. Rohit hasn't joined yet, so we can, I think we can. Yeah. Uh, so Rohit hasn't joined. We'll go to Paresh. Uh, Paresh, pretty much you've been, um, you know, you've been on the PR agency side. First of all, are there any positives from the current for the PR professional for communication? Are there any positives or are only negatives? Hmm. No, I think, um, you know, I'm I'm a born optimistic and I'm a guy. And I can tell you that, you know, all this hula blue of the virus and uh, yeah, people leaving jobs, etc. And then the economy shrinking. I can tell you all this is a blip that will turn around very, very quickly. Because this, to me, I think is the 1991 magic movement that that uh, that our earlier prime minister had. Right? It is. It is beyond. We are going to be on that absolute tipping point of a new opportunity. Right now, I think all of us are on the same level playing field. Let's understand. It is not the economic uh, breakdown. There is no, you know, embezzlement that has happened. It is a pandemic that has attacked everybody. Right. So right. everyone automatically, agencies, clients, businesses, government, everybody come on the same platform. We're on the same, same side. I think two, three things will happen from here. And I think, I think our prime minister did a great job. Some of the, some of the countries have shown the way out. Two things will happen. One, I think the focus now 
on ESG, the focus on climate change, the focus on doing the things right by companies and therefore governments and therefore the world is going to be in the limelight. I think all of us in our previous jobs, whether I was with Mukesh Amani earlier or with Unilever, have always spoken about sustainability. Today, there are a lot of companies who have not taken sustainability very seriously. It's a part of the a little box that they tick mark. I think all the companies will now rally behind sustainability and, and also governance to a large extent. So Mother Earth will, be, will take priority than anything else. Right? Very few companies have succeeded in doing that. So this will provide opportunity to the corporate communicator and to the agencies, therefore, to actually go after business and people and advise them. They have to be more advisory than running after coverages and column centimeter and you know typically what I think when Dilip was saying that off the record comments, etc. I think all this be realigned now to say how can we become socially more responsible? How do we take environment, social, and governance to the next level? So this will become, I think, a must-do, then say, okay, okay, we can also do this at the end of five or seven years. So that journey will begin very soon. And this is a great opportunity for me. Uh, on, the, on the news side, I think, I think fake news, I think Dilip has uh, you know, elaborated a lot on that. I can tell you that uh, you know, there is opportunity for a lot of these senior editors and journalists who are now going on, you know, starting their own apps and their entire new media channels. Now, they will become influencers. There will be a decline of print in the next 15, 20 years, at least on the urban, urban, rural side. Rural will keep growing because of the education, etc. So print will not die in India for the next 40 years. But I can tell you, print will decline. And therefore, what are the new influencers this new normal will create? And I can give you some examples of, just kind of wrote it down, Vikram Chandra's editor G. Varkadat's Mojo, you know, Gangadhar Patil's 101 reporters, Nilesh Mishra's Go on, of course, he's still with India today, Saurav Divedi's uh, Lalan Tap, and all, or Ken, the, the morning context. All these are now becoming credible contacts. They're also been sponsored by some companies, they're all sponsored by governments. Influencer and influencer horizon will change dramatically. No longer is the big media houses going to be the ones that people seek to influence their customers and the uh, and, and the consumers. And I think this is going to be a big one. On the third bucket uh, is, however, uh, where the GDP is going and therefore what's going to happen to people and jobs. I think this year uh, looks like a washout for a lot of people. Uh, we will look at about a 1, 1.5% GDP growth. But I think in the next three years, we'll come back to 7, 7.5%. So this is the time to invest with people. This yeah. is the time to invest with training. This is the time to invest multi cultural and multitasking abilities within your, uh, I'm, I'm a corporate comp person for many years, except five years with the agency, but providing training and providing that leverage and doing multi-dimensional roles to your people and not being set to specific is going to be the new normal and without that you won't survive. Thank you, Paresh, for your opening comments. One special question at this stage itself, uh, what are your PR agencies telling you? Your communication partners, you know, you have a large communication team. So have you slashed their fees? So uh, there has been, uh, across all companies, there has been some effort on cost restructuring, as I must say. Um, yeah, we've not gone blanket on cutting everybody, but there has been some restructuring. Uh, for example, travel. I was talking to the chairman the other day, and I said, why, you know, this kind of incessant travel that we does internationally and in India, we can easily bring it down to 30%. All our offices, all our homes are, are, are technology-based. So technology innovation is going to be absolutely Paresh, now something that we will do. So, so yes, yes, there has been, there has been some cost reduction, uh, very, very minor, but that's gone very temporary for three to five months. Okay, Paresh. Uh, key, key, key takeaways, sustainability will be the new focus and not just a tick mark. Uh, governance needs to improve. Editors will emerge as influencers. Uh, and more importantly, you just said that, yes, there has been a fee reduction of agencies, but it's a three to five month temporary cut and hopefully uh, things will be better. Thank you, Paresh. Uh, Roma, um, again, you had really big jobs and big brands and big businesses. Vedanta is a large business. Uh, tell us your opening comments. Thank you, Anurag. I think what I've been hearing, Dilip and Paresh both allude to Yes, there's a distress in the in the media community, both in terms of all the communication channels which are being used right now. They're all, all under distress, whether it's print, whether it's digital, 
whether it's OTT, all of them are getting distressed. Having said that, there's an opportunity also over here. There's a resurgence of communication. I think when I say resurgence, there's a reset button that we have pushed now, uh, post-pandemic, post-lockdown 2.0. Now we have to look at India 2.0. So I think there's an opportunity here for all communicators, both agencies and the, the in-house communicators to take this opportunity and play it out. I think the playbook of communications is going to take a drastic change, but the playbook will now become more meaningful. I think this playbook that we're going to now rewrite is going to have different parameters, different tenets, but all the same, as I feel, I'm equally optimistic that communicators' roles will be much more challenging, but they'll be much more meaningful. So I don't see things uh, completely destroyed, but I see that there is now a different way to do business. The way business continuity will happen, communicators will have to rise up to that challenge. The media universe will have to see this new normal and make sure that they can calibrate. If they calibrate it properly, I don't see that to be an issue. If you see today's business standard, India Inc. has spoken. India Inc. tells us that they are looking at the government to support to a point, but they're all very optimistic that they're going to start looking at new ways of going back to business. So I think everybody has now taken an optimistic note. That whole doomsday prediction on COVID-19 is kind of flattening out and people are getting used to the fact that they have to live a different life. I think once we understand that, communicators can really do a really a good job to really make sure that India today can really be the new humane China. I'll leave it Thank you, Roma. Thank you for bringing that positivity and saying there'll be a new communication playbook and hopefully that playbook will have new rules, it will have new chapters, it will have new ideas and hopefully will be better. But you're a client. I want to ask you, have you cut your agency's budgets? Is that something that your peers have done? If yes, by how much? And for how long you see that cut being? So, Arthak, what I hear from my peers, it's from 10% to 35%, depending on the size of the agency, depending on the volume of work that they've been doing. But uh, I have taken a pause right now for Vedanta. I will evaluate it this month. I have not had a conversation with my agency on this topic. I've not even had a conversation with certain of the media buys that we were looking at to change the dynamics there. I haven't done that. I think for the next two months, I'm going to wait and watch. So I've not made any changes. The only change that I've done is to kind of rebuild uh, and take this opportunity to use a different digital strategy. And that digital strategy will hold us in good stead. We started Desh Ki Zarurato Ke Liye and we are at that tipping point. And today I can use that Desh Ki Zarurato Ke Liye uh, a tagline very effectively. So for me, it's possibly an opportunity, which is why I'm not going to take a knee-jerk uh, decision on any of my agencies who have served me very well. Thank you, Roma. Uh, Ashwini, um, though you're the last because you requested specifically, Ashwini, again, you work with all size, shapes of clients. And you know, gone beyond just PR and communications, you've been like a business advisor in a lot of cases. Tell us your opening comments. So thank you, Anurag, Naval. Uh, it's always a privilege to join an illustrious group of people like Roma, Paresh, Rohit, and, and the lip people I have admired and held in great esteem. Uh, I'll try to take a little bit of a, uh, uh, a little tack differently from here. Uh, we'll pick some learning from a, a recent study of uh, Astrum that we did of about close to 70 CXOs about what their view of the world was and how they were looking at, at, at the new sort of thing. So let me sort of start with a quotation from Lenin uh, in 1919 and I will tell you why this is important. He says, there are, there are decades when nothing happens and there are weeks in which decades happen. And I think this paraphrases the, the challenge that COVID has uh, provided in, in a few weeks, it has wiped off decades and decades of progress, both on lives and livelihoods. And it has grave implications uh, in many ways, not only from communication, business, but otherwise. And I don't see us going into a new normal, but I see us going into a new abnormal. Because when you think about the volatility, the uncertainty, 
the ambiguity these will events will create i think we will have to learn to live in the new abnormal rather than the new normal i think that's i think point number 1 and what's the new abnormal going to look like number 1 when we are going to go from offline to online in terms of how we receive things how we buy things it has great implications for the traditional retail model and if rohit was there i would say that the kiryana going online we are we are facebook or we are geo which is the way future will happen so the reemergence of neighborhood stores and the neighborhood businesses has a great bearing on the larger e-commerce uh, business so that's i think number 1 number 2 our over dependence on china as a global supply chain market is going to move towards what i call localization and distribution of the supply chains by in by what we call prime minister has called creating greater self reliance and this will have implications for companies like pharmaceuticals medical devices healthcare and there lies the opportunity for growth and investment in in this moment and prarish talked about the moment of reforms so here's the defining moment for us to be able to recatalyze third because of the risks that we face are we going from human to automation and 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 clearly that has another set of implications as to how future of manufacturing will look and therefore what is what is going to happen we we always talk about one degree of separation in this country and we are we are what i call a socializing economy we will now have to move and relook at how we become a social distancing economy that has its own implications for the way we communicate engage mix oh, entertain and consume uh, con uh, consume communication so that's a different implication and the last in terms of the paradigm shift i see from cash is king to digital payments being the gold standard of how we transact so how does it so i'll come how does yeah. i'm coming to that huh? i'm saying these have implications in terms of uh, what the companies will need to do and the one big lesson out of that is that in all of this companies will be judged by what they are doing in this point of time as they say companies and i can quote companies will be judged by how they behaved during this war how they treated their customers how they treated their employees how they treated their suppliers and reputation will become a great differentiator about how companies will create trust in the future difference between those who shared versus those who hoarded uh, to Uh, to societies who will start to look at and you and my concerns about social care and health we'll start to look a little bit more towards companies as providers so social contracts between stakeholders and companies will change therefore i believe while there will be new opportunities there will also be new rules that we will have to look as communicators number 1 what will be the trust in institutions will direct communication from companies become far more important than third parties so trust and therefore the, the important point that uh, paresh made up and and roma made and, and dilip made about what role leader, leaders will have to play they'll have to be champions and cheerleaders of creating trust and credibility in institutions uh, roma talked about purpose purposeful companies will need to be doing more about purpose than communicating purpose because so, one, people will start punishing companies which talk greater about purpose but do little to support that so we need to be very careful about how we then steer companies through that maze of communication where purpose becomes central but how do we make sure it's credible it's believable and builds long term uh, long term trust just in time to just in case uh, my survey showed that 80% of c suite executives were unprepared with the crisis playbook right so just in case means what what happens if it goes wrong do we have a crisis comms playbook do we know how we are going to be responding as organizations or just use our instincts instincts as most of them said the last two points employees become central to everything that we do employee engagement will become central because those are going to be our best ambassadors and though that creates business continuity so how do we make sure as employees become more remote and more uh, telecommuters how do we make them make sure they remain engaged how do we, how do we make sure they remain connected with the organization communication challenge again and 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 of course parish talked about it so i want to worry about talk about environment sustainability our impact and our footprint will become important and the last but not the least safety safety will now have a extra premium about what companies will do to create a safe work environment and a safe practices environment i think this changes the nature and the dynamics of the services that companies will be called upon to now answer specifically about what my clients are responding to since i operate in a certain area of niche 
I don't have the day-to-day -day challenges of media spends or media budget, so therefore the impact is more around crisis, crisis communication, engagement, those levels of services. Uh, those are mission critical services, so what we do continues to remain. But how we will be impacted as a business is new, new revenue is going to get delayed for some period of time. So I think in, I agree with Dilip that overall we will have a, a certainly a negative impact over last year in terms of top lines and how we then become more managed, uh, how do we manage our cost and, and, and delivery will become critical to staying afloat and maintaining profitability. So that's so, mine. Th thank you, Ashwini. Um, I think Naval wants to ask some questions. Uh, Naval, all yours. I have a you know very simple elementary question. Hmm. Post COVID, will corporate communications PR be valued more than it currently is, and how? You you want me to go first? Yeah yeah sure. Look, I have always maintained that when times are good, public relations good. When times are bad, public relations even better. For many ways, because a because of the credibility it provides. Two, because of the endorsements it generates. And of course, the oft repeated value creation of the cost versus return on investment that people can generate out of good public relations. And I don't only mean the narrow definition of public relations to be our media articles. I simply feel the centrality of reputation and therefore the centrality of uh, public relations is going to be more and more critical in the post COVID world than any time before. So the question Naval is asking, let me build on that. He's asking, will marketing budgets move into PR and Copcom? Or will some part of marketing budgets be compens? You know, it will compensate for some, you know, budgets being taken away from PR. I'll, I'll, I'll take that. So now, yeah, I think I think so. The two questions, uh, which also can be mutually inclusive. I've always said this that the only facet in management, large companies, startups, mid-sized companies, brand custodianship, which is whatever you can call it, corporate communications, agency support, will always and has always remained the most most dynamic, the most loved function to a large extent. When crisis comes, then obviously, then you have to have a goose which you have to chase. But this is the only function that can touch people's lives. This is the only function that can change people's perception, therefore your brand value, whether you come to work or you don't come to work. As simple as that. 24 by 7, 7 days a week. And I think all of us in the panel and people who are watching it have done that. So irreplaceable. Today, with this new abnormal that we have been now talking about, not the normal, more than today, we are saying during COVID. I'm not even saying post-COVID. During COVID, I think all of us are more busier at home working, minus the madness, higher productivity. You know, our positioning of growth with goodness, at the share of voice, the tonality, the engagement rate has gone up so substantially, you know, significantly up than what I had in the last eight months. So, for example, in the last four weeks, I've reached 190 million people as compared to 180 in the last six, eight months on all my campaigns put together. Second phase of the question, which I think is a very interesting question. Uh, you know, I worked with, many years with levers, right? So if you have a hundred rupee, your ANP uh, ratio, say hundred rupees, your budget. So 15 years ago, 80 or 85 rupees was on print advertising, traditional PR, right? And the rest was gone on a little bit of a BTL and somewhere on digital and social. Obviously, social has grown, etc., which became 30, 32%. But these classic companies like PNG and Levers, which, which know the business best with the consumers, have stayed with traditional media. The last two or three year trend, and you know, I was, since I work with Sam Balsara, we have this match pitch uh, Madison report that I think uh, you, you always attend, uh, Nurag and Naval, and I'm sure uh, Dilip has been witness to it. Yeah, we collaborate. We yeah, and, and, and you and last brand, three years we've been collaborating. Correct. So, so we've done it for 15 years. you've seen that the entire budget has shrunk. The traditional media has shrunk percent. Okay, some chunk has gone to digital, and a good chunk has gone to uh, to media associations, influencer management, etc. Through earned media. I always believe 90 percent of my share of voice or brand value creation should be through earned media and not through paid media. Some of the events that you need to do, which is a must do because you're also into business, but share the, the entire money that I'm getting even today with Adani and earlier with Reliance, some money has moved in for marketing into earned media space, not now for the last 10 years, at least I've been in large companies. So that's moving. And I can tell you, uh, Anurag, going forward, it has to move. If it is not moving, the communication head is not doing a great job. Good. Roma, your your point of view and then 
we can develop it i think uh, there is a balance uh, which is happening i wouldn't completely discount the channels which are being used right now what i see is there is an opportunity that uh, people are uh, leveraging let's say for the electronic channels if the kind of media spends have gone high over there and they've changed the, the the rules of the game because they want to uh, use this opportunity during the covid uh, 19 uh, uh, lockdown so i think these will keep changing in the future because the future today is uncertain the business yes. itself is uncertain so if yes. we will never be able to predict and i'm seeing that all the communication channels if the cost uh, dynamics are going to fluctuate they're going to fluctuate only depending on the uh, the environment the economic situations that we'll all be uh, facing and what the what the nation is going to really give us the cue i think the government plays also a big role in this how do we perceive the way the government spends are and how the private sector is going to really demonstrate so i think all these are going to be dynamic issues there won't be one right answer dilip your take on this is it serious yeah my take on it is that um if we don't recognize that corporations big and small are going to go through a painful period we are um faking it yes. and that's dangerous the second thing is that i'm i'm slightly maybe uh contrarian here i think that good behavior on the part of corporates will be taken as expected as basic okay three i think that the level of unpreparedness for this Uh, and nobody was prepared for it is visible by the fact that when perfect relations put together a 24 by 7 war room in the first 20 days we had 12 clients come <coughs> in for strategic advice for inputs for uh, suggestions for reaching out to specific people so i think that uh, you recognize that companies were looking for what do i do now in the now in the covid period so there was one ceo who i will have to uh, keep anonymous who said i am willing to communicate i am happy to be out there and speak to media but anything that i say has to sell more of my product i am not interested in anything else you may want me to do you know brand building and you know uh, sustenance and you know be nice to employees i'm not interested in any of that not to my distributors not to my dealers i want to make sure that you give me the opportunities where i have the content the capability and the reach to make sure that i come out of this selling more product he's a he's a visionary because he's a big investor in three sectors agriculture equipment automobiles and ayurveda so he knows what he's talking about and he said look i am very clear that if you want to use me you can use whatever budgets you have you can do whatever you want to do but unless these three are met i am not interested in corporate communications for the sake of corporate communications for all i care you can shrink it but i want these three achievable and every other person who entered the war room at that point of time had similar things when they were inside that room obviously i don't know what they say outside and you know many of them have sat in on meetings with ministers prime minister etc etc so there's a certain amount of saying what is appropriate to be said and what needs to be said in public but inside the room they'll tell you the naked truth and that's the naked truth they're all scared and they want to sell product as soon as it lifts you know there are lots of uh, i'll come i want to ask one question and i'll leave all the questions to naval you know there there are young uh, pr agency owners there i can see udit patak i can see vineet anda and they were asked me various questions that's why i'm looking at the screen in the screen there see what should you know you dilip you're still a very large agency of course paresh and uh, romar clients these days right uh, you're in more the advisory space what should small and medium sized agencies do what is your advice to them as seniors in this business as leaders and you know this time is shown that you know if we all survive 
the industry survives. Industry survives, we survive. So we are actually to tell us what is your advice to these young, relatively younger uh, entrepreneurs, professionals uh, on how to survive, what to do, right. how to deal with the loss of revenue, how to deal with uncertainty. Tell them a little bit about that. That's a difficult one. You've put me on a spot. But um, I would say that at this point in time, focus only on two things. Cut costs ruthlessly. I don't know how you do it, but cut it ruthlessly. And secondly, give freely, which means clients want you to do something extra. Just do it. This is not the time to stand and argue about, uh, you know, per interaction, add on, you know, there's an additional cost for this. Creative content is going to cost you this. Uh, I think that people have to recognize that this is a time when all anybody, any client needs is an excuse to say, hey, you're not standing with me. So you've got to cut costs to make sure that what you're able to offer. And the third thing as a result of this is recognize that there's no Sunday, there's no off day. And I'm really not concerned if your kid has to finish his homework and needs your computer. I'm not interested. So you've got to recognize that that's the new reality and it's going to be the reality for a little while. Imagine the situation after World War II. So that's what I'm trying to communicate at this point of time. It's not very palatable, but that's the bald truth. Thank you, Dilip, for being real. Throughout the conversation, you've been specific and real, and I really congratulate you and thank you. Roma, Ashwini, Paresh, what are your advices? Two clients and somebody who's really a veteran and has uh, made a niche for himself in going beyond PR. So, your advice. You know, barring some of these <clears throat> uh, business like Ola, Uber, PVRs, airports, uh, airlines, aviation, when there is nothing, uh, the service industry has got something going. Right. I think somebody did make a mention, uh, it was also Roma and uh, also Ashwini, that this is the testing time, the real value of your worth, how a small or big uh, Anurag you are. This is a testing time of your character. This is your character test. You know, two days ago, I was talking to a bunch of very senior CEOs. Uh, we were in the past of the uh, HUL, uh, you know, a group. And... Uh, you know, as you know, Sanjeev Mehta, he stays here and all the past he was there. You know, people who moved on to jobs and who've taken CEO's positions, CXO's positions. I was always asking this question now, you know, what? You've been running business for 20, 30, 40 years, 15 years, 50 years. And a little blip of two or three or four months is your character. Are you telling me that everything is going to be shut because there is no customer, there is no consumer, because there is no economic movement, there is nothing? For three months, and I'm not specifically targeting smaller agencies. And I, can, and I understand the pain of smaller agencies. Okay, they might have six clients, eight clients, ten clients, some of them with them for four or five years. That's how they kind of you know, grow from there. Yes, you have to cut cost, but this is the time. Do not take out your people. Do not take out your people. You cut your salaries, whatever you want to cut your cost, work out of home, saying, okay, in future, oh, yeah. work out of home. But, but, quickly, client connections and client servicing will be seven days a week in any case. Yeah, you my book is, focus my on book ESG. Is focus out, it's called eight days a week. Sorry, yeah. sorry, one rug, I, I, uh, some technical glitch. Sorry, no, sorry, yeah. So I'm just saying that this is, this, is, this is the time. And you can give yourself two months, three months, five months. The right. lockdown okay. started uh, towards the end of March. And I can tell you because I know a lot of PR agency heads. The, some of the clients who were quick on the draw said we will take a break, say, from April 15th or 17th or 18th. When they realized that this is on, on, on April 14th, when the lockdown got extended, that's when they said, oh my God, three more weeks, five more weeks, right? 15th April, let's be very real. That's when some of the clients said, you know, I'm taking a break, reduction of fees, etc. Yeah. Yeah, no. So you, you, you just actually what? You just 12 days into the, into the turmoil. You know, it's not that six months you've closed, you shut down. There's nothing to eat in the house. This is the time of test of character. And I think you've got character. You've, I've not taken out a single of my consultant, not a single agency, uh, nobody. 
and in fact my in fact i also told them that you know it's a six month period but trust me three months four months five months review and i'm going to get back and i will get back at the normal rates so this is the time to test your character nothing else thank you parish sorry no, let me let me pick that back again for my young uh, for my young and uh, upcoming public relations firms which are mid sized to small look loss of revenue uh, is a reality new assignments will be hard to come by if they are and maybe there's a reduction in the fee or a pause <coughs> there are two or three things in the agency world there are only two major costs that that are that that bother any any entrepreneur one is the staff cost and the other is the overhead fixed overhead cost so you got to start thinking about two elements what do i need to do immediately to think about my my cash burn and how do i what can i can i consolidate reduce uh, 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 relinquish which will allow me to reduce my cash burn because nobody has that kind of reserve or the kind of financial resilience sitting there to say look i'm going to be looking for a few lakhs per month of cash burn over the period of next 5 or 6 months i mean we can keep our fingers crossed and say well there'll be a two month pause or a three month pause but i certainly do feel that uh, the it's going to have a longer term implications on liquidity and cash flow so the first and foremost immediate concern has to be what do i do to reduce my cash burn and you do what needs to be done to reduce your cash burn Uh, this also gives me an interesting point to say okay while i'm reducing my cash burn does this provide me an opportunity to pivot my business absolutely so how can i transform my own business correct using more technology so let me give you my digital. example right i have i am a big proponent of what i called asset light strategy you got to start thinking of how you want to become more nimble and asset light and reduce your fixed overhead to the barest minimum i don't have an office we have one one single location where we we use telecommuting most times we everything on the cloud for the last 5 years so asset light strategy allows you the ability to be able to shrink your cost without trying to sort of hurt people so that's sure. number one. right the second important part is to then say okay out of my client portfolio what do i need to do what kind of services do my client portfolios require which can create me additional revenue or new revenue or supplementary revenue to what i am doing it is also about thinking about the fact that look is this an opportunity for us to start looking looking at multitasking multi skilling our people so that we don't really need to expand our portfolio of people without thinking up about the expansion of client, client portfolio so multi skilling multitasking to maybe able to consolidate both revenue as well as cost is going to be the immediate priority then in the medium term short term or uh, long term you can start thinking about pivot new services Uh, Got it. Operation of old services. There are questions, lots of questions from Sana Khan, from Udit, from Vineet, around non media. But I want to ask my last question to Dilip and to each one of you, and then I will take a leave, and Naval will take over fully. I uh, have business world seminar to do. Uh, uh, Roma, your three or two predictions for the future. Well, I think in terms of the communications landscape. uh the agencies who are going to be really worth its while are the ones who have been loyal partners they will continue to be loyal partners and that's when uh, that's a test of time for them and for us as clients the the medium sized and new uh, startups who are there in the business right now do have a challenge to prove themselves differently and if they can really show a differentiator they probably will start surviving yeah pretty beautiful so create a differentiator <laughs> who are doing that and as of now during the covid-19 period there are some of them on the chat right now who might be having a conversation that how can we do this differently in our regions how can we do this differently in our sector would you like to partner us so it's not that we don't look at it differently i think we are people who look at long term in fact i would just give one small incident which which really uh, touched my heart that even as an organization when this broke we were one of the first ones to put up a special fund and we didn't put up the special fund for ourselves or anybody else we said for the daily work uh, wage worker who's now without any money without any any food to eat so i think these are things which really give you the brand value and i see partners who share that brand uh, attribute with us they are the ones who survive with their class thank, thank you roma uh, dilip my last question to you your two or three predictions for future you know short specific like you have been dilip i think he's he's locked out yeah, i'm not saying no 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 i'm not um 
I would say that the three predictions are that there will be uh, a massive change in the focus of um, companies, as I said, to ensure survival. What that means uh, for companies, I don't know. I would like to be as optimistic as Paresh is. Um, I'm not. Uh, I have polled about 120 of our clients, and I know that a lot of them are, um, are understating their anxiety and willing to state that they're understating it and being positive. Um, that's one. The second thing I think is that uh, you will see a lot of movement towards replacement of uh, human resources with, uh, I know you want us at the beginning not to talk too much about AI, but I think between AI and um, uh, a lot of automation, you will see some functions within the agency business uh, getting in some senses, they will change in the, nature, in the, in the way uh, they are being used by the, the fewer people who will be there. And the third thing I see is that work from home is going to be uh, is going to be a very large part of more organizations. And I think TCS has uh, indicated the writing on the wall by saying that look, fifty percent of our people. Uh, I can tell you that in our company, we now have a list of sixty percent of people who will actually continue to function out of home for the next three months after opening up. So. Uh, we're not saying that they'll never come back to office, but we have prepared that list so that if you want to, we can go to the extent of 60% and it's not by rotation. Rotation will be there in addition to that. So uh, I see work from home changing the landscape for a while. Uh, will we all go back to hugging, kissing and hanging around together at the Oberoi? I hope so, but uh, it's not going to be as soon as we think. Thank you, Dilip, for being you know, uh, bringing the somber, cautious note. Of course, good to be an optimist. I'll see you guys another time. Nawal, why don't you take over? Call your question, and then once I listen to the question, I'll go away. Yep. So, you know, I have uh, uh, another question uh, to the panelists. Maybe we can uh, start with Dilip. A lot of questions are coming in, so maybe I'll combine uh, uh, some of those. Vineet Handa has, uh, you know, posted a question. Let me ask that first. Uh, his question is post COVID and even now the way marketing budgets have been chopped and they build pressure on earned media news will get even more commoditized. And, uh, that's, is, is that going to become a larger source of revenue for media houses? And what is going to be the implication of that? Because what we've seen in the last few years in terms of some parts of news media getting commoditized and how corporate communication and PR has used it, is that trend going to, you know, accelerate? And if yes, then what is the implication of that? You know, my reading is that it's going to be the contrary. The, the smart viewer, the smart reader and the smart consumer is going to see through media, which is bought. And I think that, uh, though there will be a push from media houses to go in this direction, Companies or agencies who fall fall for this, and as a large agency, we have opportunities either way. So it doesn't matter to us. We make something on the swings and a little bit on the roundabouts. So I would say that uh, credible media will actually be the route to go, and you will see that. Um, I think Roma mentioned it somewhere that um, you will look at uh, at media and at agencies as to them being partners with you in the dissemination of truth, not in the dissemination of your personalized rubbish. So I think that uh, there is actually a bigger opportunity for agencies because companies have a certain silo in which they think content. And that's why agencies come in and play a role to make that content more acceptable to the real world. Right. I think now the, the, the domination of the so-called big big daddies of the of the media houses that that's that's going to be history very soon because they also indulge in a lot of this paid stuff etc right so that's going to come down and i think dilip was bang on i can see young youngsters who pass out of college xic you know who join us as trainees etc who can see a campaign which is advertorially based 
or laced or it is true credible news so i think credible news platform will continue to remain as the primary source of information a lot of journalists who are breaking out and you know doing their own little gig they have to be more credible than being non partisan or partisan to that extent so that they'll become influencers i think going forward uh if you are going to be a very science based follower and not ideology based i think that's where is going to go lastly i think media is going to fight tooth and nail and you seen many gens tweet three days ago on taking their uh, fair share of slice from google and facebook i think it's high time that the social media starts sharing uh, money and revenues with with the media organizations because ultimately they take they are aggregators of news so it's important that you do that yeah naval may i yeah yeah look uh, let me talk about i believe it's horses for courses because uh, while we we keep talking about the death of the traditional and the emergence of the new we also have to look at the the addressable audiences that we have in the course of who we want to talk to when we, when we th- think about the demographic composition of this nation while there is the the generation z uh, uh, the gen- generation g and the millennials mm-hmm. we also have a very large component of the generation x and 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 the generation y so when we start to think about how media consumption is it needs to be horses for courses and depending on who you want to do there will be a there will be a there will be a use of traditional media there will be use of new media so therefore i don't believe that there is a one size or one shoe fits all strategy we have different uh, different format different shoe sizes therefore we'll have to choose what is the best in the situation so there to my mind i i i am a more proponent of what i say holistic i i i like what parish and roma said at the end of the day if you have good content and you have credible and authentic content how it needs to be broadcasted and consumed depends on who you want to broadcast it and who your consumers going to be mm-hmm. there are still 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 people uh, who would like to pick up their paper and read their paper so there is a value for that but there are people like my son who will, who has never seen a newspaper Yeah, yeah, I think I think those days have gone where you said it is an alpha or four, right? A Times of India is read by four or five people. Right. I mean, it's so much rubbish, which is like I think demolished fifteen years ago. That's the point. Right. Also, I think Noble, one more point here is that how do we, uh, you know, the levels of engagement rate, right? So you might have a massive circulation, so-called on paper great readership, but right. but but there are there are smaller media houses, credible ones. lower on circulation but very high on engagement rate so that's really is yeah. the you know is that's the that's the formula for qualitative uh, aspect and i think the world is going to go beyond brcs and all this rubbish you know measurement techniques that we do is going to be an aggregator of news and the engagement that they have so i think that's how it's going to blend up okay so i have uh, one other you know elementary question we all know that there are Uh, a large service industry which are significantly impacted uh, because of covid and the impact unfortunately for some of those industries is going to last beyond you know the lockdown period so you have hotels you have airlines the travel tourism industry uh, since you know i'm told there are you know more than 200 people online already and many of them run pr agencies they manage large accounts beyond the obvious ones the industries that are directly impacted where the impact is going to last which are the ones which in your judgment you think are also going to be as badly impacted or as close to be impacted as the you know the the travel and tourism industry which industries do you see getting similarly impacted where the impact will last you know beyond the lockdown well into the next quarter you want me to i take think that? I, uh, yeah maybe sure, no, no, roma take that roma yeah. sure ashwin go ahead yeah ashwin. okay let's divide this into uh, into three uh, rings right what we call the need industries basic need for food health uh, basic form of travel clothing all of those will uh, will remain so therefore those oper- those what i call need based industries will continue to thrive and 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 survive in in much longer term and then we what we call uh, discretionary or uh, wants uh, industry and then we have what we call desire industries for example travel international travel long jet travel cruise travel may become a challenge but road travel which is uh, domestic will become so the, as i said the new abnormal will create new opportunities with new rules 
be able to look into the future and say who's going to get impacted no i think it's too premature for us to be able to create a landscape at this point of time but as we start to see what i call the social distancing economy new opportunities will emerge where you may be able to create niches so while very clearly i think now uh, you know the the the, the ones on the uh the, the discretionary spends the in the glamour and the night lounges and you know all of that is going to take a while to come back um uh, you seen the stocks of uh, the fmcg uh, companies and pharma companies and you know uh, all of them are are on lifetime highs so i was talking to uh, a very senior economist 3 4 day 5 days ago and he was saying all this stuff about covid and actually we are on the journey for the last two or three two or three weeks yeah for some of the traders on the road one shop who's selling a paint for example right somebody who's got a you know who's a daily wages guy obviously for them life is crazy but he says that once it opens up right people are if people are it's going to be life as normal it won't be like on a monday morning but it'll be quicker than what we would think much quicker there would be all these thoughts about cost conservations etc etc but the way our gdp is going to grow but remember a lot of companies are going to be coming to india or to southeast asia from china don't forget that at, at the background the entire prime minister's missionary is working towards opening up the economy fdi into india to make sure that all these people who are going to leave china and they could be not 100% they could be 30 40% which is huge it could be a 4 5 trillion dollar kind of move all those guys we need to make sure that we get a substantial chunk of that business now if that comes in you can imagine what the multiplier of this businesses to our indian manufacturer service industry is going to be so we we're not looking at that we're looking at okay this is my business straight jacketed business i am right now i say 200 crores i was supposed to move at 250 i mean, maybe I'll, i i want i want grow next next year but you might grow to 300 crores who knows so all this stuff is going to happen some might take one year two years three years but don't forget the medium and the long term goals here so it's not going to be all disaster uh but we just need to hold out and have some patience and it will come back but it's going to be a new right. economy it's going to be a layered economy and i think what's going to really play out are new players let's look at the pharmaceutical uh, business let's look at the wellness business now how's that going to pan out let's look at mental health let's look at these new things which are going to emerge because there's going to be a new need post covid post pandemic these are the new things which will always come and it's happened it's not that it's i'm telling something which is not right. but there's been a pandemic in the 1800s and this is a repeat of that all this is really sh- showing the same signs and i think we should be ready for a layered economy and once a layered economy starts getting to to settle down things will start falling back into place and that's when the new normal will set in so i have a lot of online questions let me pick up one from udit pathak Uh, he has a one line question which is what are the learnings from consumer behavior that's going to be completely that's going to completely change during uh, because of covid and what are the implications for th- that uh, from that for the corporate communications industry you're saying the change of consumer behavior or what that's right yeah so i think we the, your first the your question before that kind of had an answer to that too because consumers going to be in various buckets right but um, but the ones which who are aspirational and india is a very large aspirational story right youngsters etc uh, the the layoff will not be a very large lead time i i see that uh, consumer behavior and aspirations coming back very quickly uh, when i say very quickly it, it, it i'm talking about 6 to 7 months time we'll find the economy back on the road uh, you know we're talking about w and all that and the v recovery my estimates is w till november and november december onwards it'll be a v straight straight on so so consumer behavior in any case by by all by all the marketers present in the audience and outside there's nothing as customer and consumer loyalty in any case right customer loyalty lasts for 5 minutes or 10 minutes but yeah. citizen communication is is the longer one so i'm focusing on citizen communication and not on consumer communications well i think uh, uh, broadly the 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 defining spread of something like this 
and the lives and livelihood challenge that this event has uh, brought into our consciousness will create two or three uh, uh, shifts in the way we we put the lens and see the world one preservation and wellness is going to become a very important uh, consideration not only for yourself but for your families and and friends that will change the lens through how we make choices and evaluate companies or evaluate products i think that's a very important consideration about the fact that wellness and 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 preservation is going to be critical and therefore the whole idea around and roma has talked about the importance of mental health and others uh, second uh, when we think about telecommuting work from home stay shelter at home whatever the words may be how do we deal with the fortress that we create that the home will become and how we sort of then make that home office playground and everything else in time to come has its own sets of choices that we will make in the way we buy engage with people buy products and and communicate and and actually consume content uh, therefore will phone become an essential service will 5g networks will will actually become uh, essential service even for legislate for governments to legislate that itself will create its own sets of choices and the world the way world will be seen so i'm then saying well i'm not a person with a crystal ball or uh, who can look ahead but i'm saying if you start seeing the lens and changing the lens that this event has created you will try to get some kind of uh, 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 early signs of how consumers are going to evaluate and the prism through which they will see life transportation for example right uh socializing for example live events live concerts will that become uh, how people will and look at look, look at entertainment so what do you think about large sports gathering so some 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 lenses you'll have to see when if you see, look at the lens of preservation and wellness as a one big lens you will see various dimensions reflected in it that's right so last question before we uh, i think we are out of time already uh, there is a question from uh, a young uh, you know pr professional and i got it on whatsapp to one of my team members uh, this question is from a, a lady called anchal makkar her question is that could you guide the youngsters what change would come in the pr industry and what steps should we take to practice pr for you know our future career first let me uh, allow roma and pradesh because they are they are looking it from the client side so their expectations is a far more important uh, input into this yeah so no, i think the millennials see themselves very different and they are very adaptable to change and and they can they can really come out with out of the box ideas so i think they are in a good good spot i think they need to understand that yes there's a new normal they will not probably get the the opportunities that they would have otherwise had in the in a normal landscape but there there is an opportunity for the bright ones the talent will always uh, come forward and young pr professionals are the order order of the day i don't see them really receiving in their in their uh, potential i think this is an opportunity for them to really prove themselves they are the ones who are going to be the bright spots in my opinion what's what's the name manavel the young lady's name hire her <laughs> anchal makkar anchal okay hi anchal um uh, you know it's it's uh, i i did a five year stint with uh, a small agency called madison and uh, I, i amongst all my stints in my last 30 years i found the agency stint as the best because i got to work with youngsters like you you know the amount of things that i've learned from you guys i don't think i've learned from my uh, from any of the top companies that i've worked with with the levers or renbaxi or alliance that was a different kind of learning but i think the two things that you bring to the table is a very unbiased mind you have no baggage i think all of us in the panel have carried so much baggage in our lives because we've done so many stuff and so many situations so there's always a sometime a set agenda but you guys come with a clean slate right third you're so aspirational to grow to grow quickly and to become a good professional and not to because in this like i said earlier communications impact you know perceptions and reputation and the brand value so whatever you do right or wrong actually is is the death or the life of an organization in many ways than one so 
to build that whole credible story, two, three things. One is you have to get away from the standard PR practices and say, okay, how much more can I do for the client in terms of coverage, engagement with the media, news wise agencies are getting more stronger, etc. But also look at the humane side. Look at how the brand footprints are going to make a difference to the people and the ecosystem and the world in general. If you can do that, right? And I, I can tell you agencies sometimes don't push the client to do that. But if you can do that, you will find a huge space and respect with the client size. So focus on the, these three, four things and be completely transparent and honest and compassionate. And there you are, great winning formula. All right. So let me, let me try to submit the uh, wonderful thoughts from Roma and, and Paresh, but let me give you a little bit brass, brass tags. When I got into the public relations business, uh, anytime I went and met a client, uh, new or old, I was asked the same question. So how many journalists do you know and how many articles can you uh, <laughs> get for me? And therefore, I used to call it the know who world. Knowing who was far more important than the know how world. And I, I didn't come from the know who world. And I was the big champion and proponent of the know who. The question is, uh, uh, sorry, the know how. The know who is going to become more and more irrelevant. As, as Paresh already said, you know, new smaller, uh, new smaller outlets, more fragmentation. How many people will you ever know enough to be able to say, I know enough? But the question is, so what's the know-how? And what's the know-how needed today? And in the, in the immediate future, that is going to be the competencies that are going to be respected and valued by clients and, and, and peers. And I think that's number one. The know-how to be able to create a simple, compelling story, which is based on credible and compelling facts on behalf of your clients, whether it's going to be in audio, video, text format, you need to be multi-skill in the way you want to be able to tell your stories, because that was the most important part. If you had a good story and you were able to construct it well, it can engage people. Two, you will have to think about multifunctional skills, because today, Regulatory affairs, digital advocacy, traditional public relations, all has diffuse boundaries. One regulatory move and Parish's business can go for a tailspin and the next three months he'll be working and running around the government offices rather than trying to think about anything else. And that's true for any one of our clients. And, and, and the agency, the post-COVID world is not going to allow for the strict boundaries between corporate affairs, public relations, digital advocacy. Therefore, the know-how will have to be multifunctional and multimodal from people. And we will have to be good at several things without being masters of everything. So our ability to be able to guide clients and build these multifunctional capabilities over a period of time, with, but with the content in the heart of everything that we do, will demand a different set of preparedness, will demand a level of intellectual integrity and caliber, which I don't believe comes from the know-who uh, know world. That is a different. Now the know who, the know how makes you strong and the know who, the know who becomes actually an amplifier. That's right. I just want to add uh, uh, Naval to, to again to our council. Uh, we've been largely successful also in the small outfit uh, is because I always said one thing to my, to my young, especially my youngsters and uh, youngsters of the agency that don't get scared of two people in a life. One is media and one is your client. So, you know, if you're, if you've got a strong conviction, if you worked hard, there's an effort, forget the output and the outcome, if there's an effort there, then you have to put your foot on the door and don't get bullied by anybody. Only you know? be scared of your wife and God. <laughs> well, that's a different foot on the mouth disease. That's a different one. <laughs> Fantastic session. Uh, bully I, us. I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic session. I, I just want to thank all of you uh, for having shared your valuable insights. I have one uh, last quick one before uh, we, we all uh, scoot. You know, it's been a very tough, gloomy time for the industry. Uh, things have been very fluid. And uh, as we all know that in uh, large urban centers, especially the cities, uh, uh, the large cities, the metros, the lockdown down is likely to get extended. Uh, things will possibly get a little more, you know, harder and tougher before they get better. So what is your one last parting message of hope before we uh, log off from here? What, what is your one last message, parting message of hope to 
people in the industry, the ones who are online watching. Look, this is not. Let me, as a lady, take that first. I'm so sorry, Roma. First, you go. Yeah, go ahead. I I think the men are dominating here. Okay, that was that was said lightly. Finally, finally. <laughs> that was said lightly. No, I think uh, uh, what the ray of hope today is that the brands which are reliable, which are trustworthy, and who have proved their metal, they're really going to last. The new ones, which are going to emerge in the new normal, are going to be the wild cards, and they are the ones who are also going to get an opportunity. I think we should look at both the wild cards, and we should also look at the the reliability and trust and resilience of the trusted brands, which are going to emerge stronger. But I can tell you, the wild cards are going to play their own game, and they're going to do well. So I think there's a lot of hope in this situation that we have learnt. the new things that we learned during the 3 weeks every day has been a new day for us every day has been a new learning for us i think the young uh, uh, and the bold are there as ashwini mentioned they are the ones who will be uh, in the forefront but at the same time the experience that we have learned over this 3 weeks cannot match anything that we have ever learned in the past and i think that's what the way forward True. one week in a crisis is one year of learning so i mean that's the analogy right you spend one week in a crisis you learn one year worth of work more than that <laughs> a decade of learning I keep it simple yeah you're right absolutely it's almost a decade yeah. okay so uh, before i leave uh, before i allow mr prash choudhary to have the last word in this i'll sort of talk about <laughs> look in my opening comments uh, now i talked about new rules new opportunity is this an existing crisis absolutely not do we have a do we have a difficult time ahead of us absolutely but in every difficulty comes a new set of opportunities the games of the rules the rules of the game will change we have to be smart enough to understand where the new opportunities will come and what the new rules will entail that we do okay so if, i don't think anybody has to have a gloom gloom failure on this the smarter ones will be the guys who will figure it out faster than anybody else and those are the guys who will survive and thrive there is no one formula which says mujhe bacha lo <coughs> I think this is to all my fellow communicators across, um, you know, agencies and clients, and you know, with digital and all platforms. That if you look at the largest companies, it still has a very, very high-end, functioning, effective corporate communications agency teams, and the teams are small. You look at a very large company; the marketing size would be five thousand, eight thousand people. Technical guys, even ten, fifteen thousand people. Supply chain, finance, IT, and you know HR. And but the communications, the agency teams are very small. Roma, myself, uh, you know, Rohit is not there. We manage very, very large, fifty billion dollar, hundred billion dollar, one hundred twenty billion dollar organizations globally with a small team. Right? Nothing is going to happen to this team. because because if there is anyone in the in the entire organization you know starting from the chairman and the ceo who of course will take charge and lead and anchor he will also look at you and in depend on you to help him and to hold his hand and her hand to take you through this crisis because there's nobody else in the whole organization that can teach you and can be calm in the situation of crisis than any other facet that there us so have the faith and have the passion and have the positivity which we all have and tell me believe me one year one and a half years or maybe lesser i'm always like i said born optimist the when the reversal comes you know when when the good times come you will see that you will grow big time so keep smiling and 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 be very positive it's not hopeful be positive it will it will be all good for all of us fantastic thank you so much i i i'd like to thank all of you roma thank you paresh ashwini i know uh, dilip had to uh, scoot uh, uh, 10 minutes back he had another session to attend uh, rohit i am told could not join he had uh, somebody in his family who uh, fell uh, unwell last minute but thank you for your valuable time and the message of hope i am sure the pr and corporate communication industry will be out of this uh, crisis very soon and we'll be able to create new avenues of opportunity and new avenues for growth once the lockdown is over thank you so much Thank you for the opportunity, Naval and Anurag and Nixon Media. And thanks, guys, for listening in. Good Thank to you. see you, Roma, and good to see you, Ashwini, after a long time. Thanks very much. It's a privilege, privilege to be able to have this conversation with a, a wide set of uh, people in the industry, and of course, my illustrious panelists. And many thanks, Naval and and Anurag. Learned a lot uh, hearing hearing people and uh, and and 
uh, looking at the question so many many thanks it's a privilege thank you ashwin thank you all thank you take care stay okay. safe